Hey there everybody, Esso here. So, just a quick disclaimer. This isn't going to be like regular content, and don't expect any more videos like this to be put out in the near future, because I think that this is what most people would vaguely consider to be drama content. And I fucking cannot stand drama content or even being remotely involved in it. And based upon past viewer reactions, I don't think you guys particularly enjoy watching it, at least not as much as my regular content. And indeed, I have no joy in making this. In fact, this was probably the hardest script which I've ever had to write, mainly because this is going to end up covering some personal detail about myself, which I'd really rather not go into and prefer to distance this channel from, because it's briefly going to be touching upon a chapter in history which most people in the voluntarist circles, at least who watch me in Dapperton, refer to as the Anarchist Meme War of 2018, which took place from May to early August of that year. And because I don't know how many of you can relate, but I'm someone who prefers to think of themselves as being somewhat invulnerable, or at least views vulnerability personally as a trait I want to publicly exert as little as humanly possible and can't present the information which I'm about to present or convey what messages I want to get off my chest without expressing a position of vulnerability. But I have to make this, because I've read a lot of comments from both my viewers and Dapperton's viewers whom, because we never actually addressed publicly what happened as a result of the little spat we had, or what the full context of the conflict even was from a non-biased perspective, there are a lot of people who watch my content and people who watch Dapperton's content before he became cinema scum, who refuse to watch the other party's content and have a negative perspective of the other party in the dispute. Even though we were not the only parties involved, it actually pretty much split the entire community until the bitter end, but more so because the subject of this video has been engaging in what I can only describe as targeted harassment and obsessive stalkerish behavior since I've opened up my YouTube channel and started creating political content. Now, I've addressed this individual's behavior in the past, particularly on my channel entitled Esso Posting, which I rarely ever do anything on as of right now, as you may be able to put together based on the fact that the account icon is my old avatar set in front of an ANCAP flag, but never in a comprehensive and complete manner with all of his actions contextualized and cohesively put together or with my side of the story accurately explained or described. Why I feel I have to make this is as a result of this individual's behaviors, particularly recent ones. It's gotten to the point where I can't ignore this anymore. I've actually begun losing sleep at night over this, which has been affecting my income significantly as a self-employed agorist, and this coupled with some of the absolutely disgusting and reprehensible things this person has been doing, particularly saying about me and why he's saying it, this is beginning to actually take a toll on my mental state. I'm finding it increasingly difficult to socialize in my personal life. I'm beginning to develop serious self-esteem issues, which, by the way, is a big part of the reason why over the last few months the content I've been uploading is becoming less frequent, and I feel pretty sure that I'm going to end up developing some sort of anxiety disorder unless I finally put my foot down and do something about this motherfucker. And I figured that out of my options, which were to expose all of this, file a def information suit slash restraining order, or travel down to his house personally with a bat and spend five minutes alone with him, I figured that this was the most productive course of action I could take because this is the least costly and it directly creates a counter and rebuttal to the things he is saying so that some of these lines can be corrected and most importantly, people know to avoid the person who I'm talking about and that what they're saying about me is absolutely not true. So first, let's address the initial point because I have little if anything to say here and I want to move on quickly. 
What happened between Dapperton and I, and why did our feud become so bitter so quickly? Well, in around May of 2018, a user by the name of Blue, better known as Operation Blueism, joined my Discord server. Whom at the time I had no idea who he was, his history with manufacturing e-drama and manipulating people with within anarchist circles to fight against each other. And while I and a few other people were talking in voice chat one night, I want to say it was around the 18th of that month, Blue joined the voice chat and claimed that he had evidence of various Marxist Discord servers spreading doxes and organizing false flag raids targeting certain online content, along with expressing an interest in the bigger volunteerist YouTube channels, helping him spread the content around so that it could be seen by as many people as possible. So, long story short, a few people were interested, myself included, because his proposed reasoning for wanting us to get involved seemed to check out being that he didn't like Marxists and wanted to expose them as badly as we did if they were engaging in this behavior, and that if it weren't true, Blue would look just as bad as we would, and on top of this, his initial claim actually proved to be true, and a collection of several thousand screenshots along with hours of video was released on Blueism's blog, which I now unfortunately believe is defunct and the only evidence which exists at this point in time is documented on a small YouTube channel known as Journey LT. In fact, the people we exposed created a browser extension which works as a bot that circles through a bunch of videos that would have been considered problematic to Marxist social justice advocates and automatically flagged them. Filthy Heretic and Dapperton had a few back and forths on Twitter because Filthy had approached him hoping that Dapperton would be interested in helping us spread the word of what we had found. Daps was initially interested until he learned that Blue was involved, in which case he told Filthy not to associate with Blue, and Dapperton had a good reason for not wanting to be involved with Blue because Blue, previously under the name of Operation Anarchism among various other aliases which weren't definitively tied to him, had spread Dapperton's personal information and had a real-life contact to go to Dapperton's house and slash the tires on his car. Now, admittedly, I wasn't following their back and forth too closely because it really seemed to be a result of poor communication on both their parts from a superficial perspective, and because for some reason, despite me not being the only person involved in collecting this information or even a significant figure in the team which did, I was never even in any of these Marxist Discord servers. I became the main target of attack which Marxists focused on, and I was preoccupied dealing with their nonsense. So, it was at this point where Blue had openly begun starting to manipulate me along with the other people in this team, because for some reason which is still unclear to this day, Dapperton decided it was a good idea to create a staged series of screenshots with Democratic Socialist 01 where they discussed a trade of DS01 apparently paying Dapperton to make a video about the situation and attack us. While it turned out to be untrue that Dapperton was being paid by DS01, these screenshots were still real and a real conversation which happened. And when we'd picked up on it, we ran with the story which was apparently supposed to be a gotcha, an attempt to sabotage the research we were doing by proving that our information was unreliable. But the thing is, that only heightened our suspicions of Dapperton at this point, because here he was openly collaborating with Marxists to sabotage the research intended to expose them. Now, I don't think that Dapperton had any ill intentions here. I think he was trying to show us that Blue wasn't a trustworthy individual and was a manipulative person who would take anything presented to him and try and spin it in a way which favored him regardless of whether or not it was factually accurate. But this unfortunately had the opposite effect. What Dapperton didn't know is that Blue had been trying to convince everyone that he was working with following the interaction between between Filthy and Dapperton, that Dapperton was not actually an anarchist, was starting to turn against libertarian ideals, and was trying to sabotage what we were doing because this project was going to be huge, and Dapperton wanted anarchists to become Republicans since he allegedly was a delegate of the Republican Party. It's 
stupid in hindsight, but in Dapperton's attempt to try and show us that Blue wasn't trustworthy, he'd ended up actually making this narrative Blue was trying to construct more plausible by effectively helping Marxists do damage control and strengthen a counter-narrative to what was revealed. From my perspective, Blue had come through for us before, he had, again, what seemed to be sound reasoning for being suspicious of Dapperton, and he also had a shared incentive to help us out, so why would he stab us in the back now? Well, it turned out that his actual intentions from the very beginning were to associate with a few of the more prolific, voluntarist content creators, knowing full well that Dapperton wouldn't respond kindly to people associating with Blue, and would result in him attacking Blue, which Blue would then use as proof that Dapperton wasn't actually an anarchist, and create an internal civil war within the voluntarist community, and literally every step along the way outside of this was just him putting the pieces in place to create a narrative structure which could lead to the formation of a dichotomy of interests that ensured both parties would look at the other as threats to them and their goals. This destructive cycle continued until eventually the point of no return was reached, where out of nowhere, Blue commented under one of Dapperton's videos the name of his significant other. So why I even went along with this in the first place is because frankly by this point I'd just kind of given up trying to make sense of what was going on and I was simply working with Blue because of the sunk cost fallacy. I'd felt that I'd already sacrificed a lot in working with Blue and from my perspective there was no going back from that so I sort of just went with whatever he did and hoped that everything just kind of worked out in the end. Pretty sure by this point, I didn't even really have a cohesive idea of what my interests were anymore, other than stop Dapperton. So I made a video running apologetics for Blue and doubling down for him, which would prove to be the limit with a response so negative that even I had become disaffected from Blue as a result because I realized right there that I'd screwed up. Up until this point, my videos for the last month or so were nothing but spicy attacks against Dapperton based on weak reasoning that was largely formulated by a lack of thought put into the arguments I was making, and just wanting to make a quick response to something new which Dapperton had said. Really, there was a single comment under that video which I think was the point which I can trace back to and say caused me to come back to my senses, which I'm paraphrasing because that video is long gone and I don't remember who said it, but it was something along the lines of, I can't believe I actually used to like your content, which actually genuinely fucking tugged at my heartstrings and for like a week caused me to fall into a bit of an existential crisis. Now, this isn't to try and excuse my actions here. In fact, I genuinely felt and still do feel so bad about doing this that outside of the second main subject of this video, my guilt over doing this to Dapperton, the man who inspired me to make the content I do today and who single-handedly helped me get to the position I'm in right now, I'd argue that this is partly the origin of my gradual debilitation over the last year, and I've tried to make up to Dapperton as much as possible. We talk regularly through Discord and direct messages, and I believe he's forgiven me, but I genuinely doubt that I'll ever forgive myself, and the memory of doing this is probably going to haunt me until the day that I die. But the impression a lot of people seem to have taken away and run with, particularly the individual who is the main subject of this video, is that this was the result of a character defect of mine, and that I just love drama and I'm a spiteful, vitriolic person. Well, firstly, I try to avoid getting involved in conflicts as much as I possibly can because I don't view them as being productive for either side of the disagreement. They usually just end poorly for everyone involved, and there really aren't ever any winners. They're just people who walk away with fewer scratches. But I'm sure this is going to be very difficult to try and contextualize, to put yourself into my headspace, but I was genuinely convinced that what I was doing and what the people I was associating with were doing was well-intentioned. 
That doesn't excuse what I did, but I'm not this scummy monster of a person who just waits for opportunities to screw people over for some petty short-lived self-gain, and I know Dapperton isn't either. I'd argue that the person who's the main subject of the video here is, and then some, but I'd suppose this is a good way to transition into that subject. Now, the reason that happened to be included as a section of this particular video about this particular person is firstly it sets a few running themes with the problems about what he says. For example, he likes to take things I've said or other people have said and done and construct these weird contextualizations of what I've done or what they've done which doesn't logically follow from anything I or them have said and actually subtly creates an unfalsifiable argument. This is why if you've ever spoken to this person about me or seen what he says about me compared to my actual actions or interacting with me directly, you basically are talking to or about two entirely different people. He does this all while laughably trying to suggest that any attempt to contextualize the things he's saying has to come from the screenshots or framework which he's arbitrarily constructed. So his version of SO is truly and completely disassociated from observable reality. Secondly, it is largely the point of origin which can be tracked back to where this particular person became significant enough to catch my attention, because practically since I began making political videos on YouTube, when I was interested in anarchism but still had much to learn about it and was largely just experimenting with styles along with trying to learn more about it, this individual was commenting under pretty much every video I made and was spamming his social media timeline with attacks against my character and this supposed problems I had with my videos. I mainly just ignored him because I found his arguments to be nonsensical and because at the time he really didn't have a large enough platform to influence how people saw me despite how ridiculous I found his statements to be. I didn't want to address him because I felt like it would have been punching down, which would have only really given him attention. And indeed, if you go back through his Twitter feed starting from around early 2017 to this day, this is one of the main themes which most of his posts share. Me, perceived problems with my character, misrepresentations of things I've said or done, and just generally obsessing over me. Of course, it's gradually gotten worse over time, which has led me to make this video. The person that I'm talking about today is a user by the name of Jim Jesus. And during this conflict between Dapperton and Blue, along with the group that Blue had organized, Jim had managed to catch the attention of Dapperton, because of course with Jim's obsession over me, he fit right in with the narratives Dapperton found to be in his interest at the time to promote. So Dapperton re-uploaded pretty much every video Jim made attacking me and what I was involved in, which unfortunately led to Jim gaining quite a bit of attention. I mean, he was getting 50 views per video before, now he gets upwards of 150 to 200 per video. Which, to this day, he still has Dapperton convinced that he's a friend and likes associating with him, despite the fact that in numerous videos that he openly dislikes Dapperton because according to him, Dapperton is stupid. Jim also has a little clique of individuals he associates with on Discord, which basically do anything that he says, which, if you're in Dapperton server right now, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Because anytime anyone in that server disputes with Jim, Promethium Oxide, Shiny, or McToast, any one of them who wasn't in the conversation will magically, within about 15 to 20 seconds later, pop in and start dogpiling you so that you can't respond to what they're saying. And they all use the exact same sort of reasoning, the schizophrenic gaps between points within their arguments which don't cohesively flow in any sort of logical manner, the attempts to invoke unrelated subjects which have nothing to do with the debate in question and bullshitting a reason as to why there's supposedly a connection. Well, 
Two of these people, Shiny and Prometheum Oxide, used to run Dapperton's old Discord server and notably mass banned every single person on there because Shiny and I had a dispute in Shane Killian's Discord server the day before where I had made an observation which I'll expand upon later in this video. She screenshotted what I'd said out of context and DM'd it to Jim, which Jim, being Jim, uploaded it to Twitter and tried to misrepresent what I'd said to as many people as possible without the initial context. So I brought up the fact that she deliberately quote mined what I'd said and lied about me, which as a result she tried that dogpiling shit mentioned earlier with Prometheum Oxide who was also in the server at the time, which resulted in Shane banning both of them. To which they turned around and banned Shane from Dapperton server because Shane was allegedly violating terms of service by promoting lies according to them, which Dapperton wasn't too fond of, which resulted in them freaking out. Dapperton made a whole video about it back at the start of this year, yet because they're friends with Jim, they've now managed to work their way back not only into Dapperton's server once again, but have admin roles and have more autonomy over what they can or couldn't do before, which anyone in Dapperton's old server can tell you that it was being run like a dictatorship. So expect if someone so much as sneezes at these mentally unstable lunatics the wrong way, this server to disappear as well. Jim and his little group are so detached from reality that I can instantly tell just by certain word choices people use or the way they've framed something that their view on the matter was shaped by talking to Jim or one of his friends. For example, Jim has grabbed onto this dead meme which Marxists on Twitter tried to create earlier this year in order to demonize political content creators who use avatars. Because it just so happens that a lot of the people who use avatars to comment over their videos happen to be people who call them on their bullshit. And one of the particular content creators who was heavily affected by this was yours truly. And the term which Marxists came up for this attempted forced meme was the Rant Sona meme. Now, for even them, this died within like a week because it never really gained any significant traction since, as it turns out, you can't just force people to develop an attitude towards something because you call what you're saying about it a meme and circle jerk with a few of your friends over it to make it famous. But because this was something which Jim perceived to be a slight against me, to this day you will still regularly see him cringe-inducingly trying to run with the whole rant sona non-meme as if it's relevant. So when someone approaches me talking about rant sonas, I can pretty much immediately tell where they came from or where they got whatever narrative that is in their head. Now, Jim's relations and how he's manipulated Dapperton in an eerily similar way to how Filthy and I were manipulated by Blue along with the people Jim runs in circles with is a subject for its own video entirely. One which I'll hopefully never have to make because I really hope that this is going to be the end of my problems with him. I mean, this is what Mr. Enter did with his online harassment problem and the people who were harassing him got chased away, so that's sort of what inspired this video in the first place. But anyway, it's sort of difficult to even begin with addressing some of the outrageously defamatory shit Jim said about me over the years along with his motivations, not because it's difficult to characterize or describe, but because this is where I start having to go into personal details about myself, since otherwise I wouldn't be able to actually respond to a lot of these claims. So, sometime around September of 2018, Blue, for some reason, was still under the impression that I was favorable to his cause and was comfortable with voice chatting with me and discussing our plans, quote-unquote. I'd also had one idea which proved to be a saving grace for me, which was that during the plotting with Blue initially, I'd recorded a few sessions to prove my passive role. I made a few recordings because Blue was talking about his further plans he had and I wanted to help make sure that he was gone forever because I wanted to help solve a problem which I felt responsible in causing so that I could prove that I did have good intentions. 
So I just went along and pretended to be in favor and add to what Blue was suggesting and pretending just generally that I was in on it. I then uploaded these and sent these around a few Discord servers with the explicitly stated context for these recordings that I was not actually working with Blue, that I was pretending to work with Blue. Jim then created an archive channel hosting these recordings on YouTube and claimed in the description of each of these uploads that these were secret recordings taken of me conspiring with Blue. So I messaged Jim in Dapperton's Discord asking him basically why he was outright lying about me and misrepresenting my recordings. These videos are still up to this day by the way with the exact same descriptions. He started freaking out that I dared challenge him, and then he fucking doxed me all because I called him out for brazenly lying about me. I have no idea how he obtained my personal information to this day. He claims that he didn't dox me, but he literally said I and a few of my friends found what was sent to me through DMs by one of his friends moments after I left the Discord because his friends started dogpiling me. Like. Fuck off, I and most other people don't need a screenshot of you literally saying, here's Esso's real name and the names of some of his family members I managed to obtain, to be able to tell that you're guilty as sin. We don't have the mental capacity of a five-year-old like you apparently do. There's such thing as deductive reasoning. At this point, he'll usually try and flip-flop and try and claim, well, he did spread this around, but I gave this personal information out myself somewhere, which of course I never did and he can't point to any place that I've ever done in any which way that was even remotely connected to my YouTube channel, which is why he now blocks anyone who complains about his disinformation under his videos or attempts to call him out on it. Oh, did I mention that he doxed my family? Yeah, we're not even close to the fucking worst part yet, and he's starting to make Blue look sympathetic in comparison. But even if this wasn't a dox, and he was just sharing around information he somehow obtained legitimately, this would still be an intimidation tactic intended to try and silence me. Now, Jim's lied about me so many times that if I were to go into detail about every single one of them, or the story behind them and the actual context, this video would be well over two hours long, so I guess I'll try and start rattling some of my favorites off here. He's claimed that I'm mentally incapable of driving a car. <laughs> He's claimed that I secretly have fetal alcohol syndrome, which, I mean, what? Some of these are just like tabloid gossip tier bullshit, and yeah, obviously none of them are true, but anyway. He selectively edited sections of a Q&A stream I was involved in with David Friedman where he was answering some questions about his positions which people in the call were posing to him and I felt that he was mischaracterizing a couple of the positions he was attempting to describe so I was just trying to clarify what these positions actually were and Shiny, who was in this stream for some reason started talking over me and Jim tried to claim that this was a debate. Then when this video started getting ratioed because people were upset with him mischaracterizing that exchange, most notably Nate the Voluntarist, the person who actually uploaded it, he started blocking anyone who called him out like the intellectual coward that he is, went onto Twitter and started dog whistling to his Marxist buddies for them to share the video around to try and get their audience to like it. He also has friends or an alt in my server taking screenshots I and other people say out of context and then using them to lie about me and the people that I associate with, which if you don't recognize this. This is a classic stalker tactic of trying to make someone feel paranoid that anyone they're around could be against them. It's intended to try and get the targeted person to isolate themselves, which is what people like Jim seek to do. But you'll notice that in some of his recent streams or videos and the things that he said on social media, he seems to be suggesting at this point all of what he's doing is just in a desperate attempt to try and get me to make a response response to him. As a result, he's become increasingly desperate to where he's now openly engaging in defamation by trying to claim I'm a pedophile. 
Yes, I brought up the D word because that's what this is. As in, if I were to actually file a defamation suit against Jim, I would most definitely win because he has absolutely no evidence to base this claim off of, and he's clearly just trying to repost this claim and spread the idea around to as many people as possible so that people just accept it as true without critically examining the facts behind it, with a clear malicious intention behind doing this. Jim claims he never called me a pedophile, which is just an outright lie. He claims that I drew lolly porn at one point in my life because I ran some fucking cringy DA account when I was in my early teens where I favorited a bunch of vor art, which Jim originally tried sharing that around as the definitive assassination of my character, but it turned out that nobody cares, not even me, because most people who watch my videos watch my videos for the information that I'm presenting, Plus, quite a few people in my server share around Vorar too. And plus, everyone was a cringy teenager who had different interests at one point in their life. So if anything, it humanized me more and created a few dank memes my fanbase could share around and get some joy out of. I think he was also under the impression that I try to hide this from people. Nah, not really. I, I don't care whether or not people know that this happened, because this happened when I was between the ages of 14 and 17, and I'm not in my early to mid-teens now. So, why did I change my name and largely disassociate? Well, the doy. I don't want the same keywords used to search up an essay I make about a serious political issue which I actually want people to take into consideration to be associated with some angsty cringe fest from my youth. Terrible optics. Which is why he presumably had to start lying about what I actually posted or favorited, which just like everything else Jim has claimed or done so far, I think should go without saying that it's not so surprisingly untrue or dishonest. He really is just a fucking liar who makes shit up as he goes and will say or do anything just to try and achieve a perceived goal. This by definition would make Jim a clinical psychopath by the way. By the way, while we're on this note, somebody by the name of Michelle Caitlin made a few videos about the feud back in 2018 where they largely tried to assassinate my character by engaging in similar disingenuous tactics to what Jim was, which naturally brought them to Jim's attention and Jim felt like it was in his interest to uncritically defend them because they'd attacked the character of the evil Snow Fox as well. Well, it turned out out a few months later that Michelle Caitlin was exposed soliciting nudes from children as young as 13 years old over Discord and tried to use them to intimidate these kids into encouraging more exploitative behaviors out of them. Which I thought was just hilarious because here was this person drama whoring and trying to make similar accusations towards other people of what they themselves are actually guilty of. Well, Jim, being the shitfucker that he is, started trying to do damage control for Michelle Caitlin with yet another set of self-contradictory arguments seeming to work on kettle logic. The screenshots were fake, which is really hilarious coming from him, because one of the people who happened to share the screenshots on Twitter was David Sherratt, even though he is not the source of the screenshots. And also that the people Caitlyn had solicited nudes from, they really weren't that young. They could consent. It's not weird to be getting sexual pleasure from 13-year-old nudes. R fucking really, Jim? Really? You're going to call me a pedophile based on absolutely nothing or horrifically distorting the context of things which I've said on YouTube or elsewhere to where it doesn't even resemble my original statement, like in my video explaining why Cody Wilson couldn't have been guilty of the charges he was accused of, and I pointed out that the age of consent in the state of Texas was 17, while the arrest warrant claimed the girl Cody Wilson was with was 17. He actually used the fact that I made this point to try and argue argue that I'm a pedophile before. Meanwhile, here he is claiming that it's not weird to masturbate to pictures of 13 year old boys and use them as revenge porn? Yeah, okay. Could you imagine if I had said something even remotely approaching that? 
oh, I'd never hear the end of it from Jim, and that would likely be the end of my ability to make videos on YouTube. And understandably so, because it's a pretty disgusting thing to say. But isn't it really interesting how when it comes to Jim or something which Jim is defending, the burden of proof is so expansive that you literally could have a screenshot of him saying that he did it, and it's not enough to prove that he did it. And when it comes to a person or a subject he doesn't like, or is attempting attempting to argue against, suddenly, not doing anything becomes proof that they engaged in some sort of nefarious behavior because of some implicit message that doesn't actually exist or which he just made up on the spot. Almost like he's so full of fucking shit that every time he opens his mouth it may as well just be an explosion of diarrhea flying everywhere. Again, to clarify, I have no intention of filing a defamation suit. I made this video specifically to expose the absolutely filthy things you're doing to other content creators on this platform to the light of day, Jim, so that I not only can attempt to satisfy myself and hope to get back to uploading more often and back to a state where I don't feel as much weight on my conscious, while I could sleep easier at night knowing that more people know who you really are, but also so I can effectively expose you for the lying, weaselly, conniving, disgusting, psychopathic fucking scum that you are. I'm not even the first person he's obsessed over before, either. I seem to be the first person he's obsessed over to where what he's doing can accurately be described as harassment, but before I started making videos, he was going crazy over Shane for refuting consequentialist arguments, and before Shane, he was nutting over Molyneux. By the way, beyond this video, Jim, you will never be mentioned on my channel again. I know how obsessive psychopaths like you work. If I give you an inch you'll take a mile and given that you're doxing and trying to convince people I'm a pedophile just to get me to acknowledge your position in some debate I genuinely wouldn't put it past you to escalate to where you're sending mail bombs to my house or you're coming over to my house in real life and parking outside of my house for multiple days at a time in fact I had to debate with myself for a very long time as to whether or not I should even be making this video in the fear that you'd interpret this as some form of validation for your shitty behavior and would cause this harassment to get even worse. The escalation which Jim's already showing me tells me that I can't just ignore him and hope that he goes away because it's only going to get worse. But yeah, we're past the point of debate, Jim. That ship sailed a while ago. And with just what you've done in the last two years on YouTube, particularly since about summer 2018, there is nothing you can ever do to change that. Literally just seeing your name at this point fills me with existential dread, because I know that anything it's attached to is going to be more weight on my shoulders. I will probably despise you and want nothing to do with you until the day you die, and likely after that. If all all you wanted, Jim, was to have a little disagreement and debate about the things we disputed on. I genuinely wouldn't care. It might have even entertained that, which at this point, it really just seems like you're engaging in fallacious reasoning and trying to misrepresent my actual positions when you address them because you've developed some sort of contrarian attitude towards anything I present where it has to be wrong because I said it. But with his attempts to divide libertarian circles through manufacturing internal drama, which, by the way, he will more than likely hilariously attempt to accuse me of trying to spark conflict and defaming him by making this video since some of the main tactics he seems to be fond of are gaslighting and projection. All I'll say on that, Jim, is that a goal of yours is to make libertarianism associated with consequentialism in mainstream discourse rather than natural law theory. Well, Jim, you've set quite an example for consequentialism. There's David Friedman, then there's you, the fat troglodyte who doxes people's family and slanders them to try and destroy their lives for some small political points on YouTube. Remember that, everyone. Jim is the face of consequentialism. Anyway, I'll admit, I'm kinda interested to see how this video is received. Uh, if the ratings are removed, that's probably because Jim went and dog-whistled some of his Marxist friends on Twitter and they came and raided the video, so... 
Yeah, don't can't pay too much mind to that. But really, the point of putting this out there was more as a cry for help. Because I really don't know what else to do about this. I, and I refuse to keep living like this, just sitting here and taking this. It's the first time I've really just, like, poured my heart out over a subject, and I gotta tell you, just writing and recording this makes me feel like a veil has just been lifted. I seriously can't even describe how much better I feel just getting this out there on record, finally addressing this problem, and hopefully doing something about it. If you all could comment your thoughts, maybe some support, like, and share, that would all be great. Thank you all, I apologize if the somewhat personal nature of this video was a bit too cringe and off-putting for some people in my audience to get into, and more videos will be coming out shortly. Not like this, but political videos.